Hello and welcome to today's press conference. I'm your host, Jim DiLorenzo, the principal of Jim DiLorenzo Public Relations. You can find me online at jimdilorenzo.com. A reminder that I'm always available to answer your questions about public relations, how it works, what it is, how it can help you. Please feel free to email me at jim at jhdenterprises.com, contact me through LinkedIn, or on Twitter where my handle is at jhd16. In my public relations career, I've had the good fortune to meet many interesting people, athletes, entrepreneurs, reporters, coaches, authors, executives, editors, entertainers, and innovators. My guest today is Tom Scuria, the principal of IAWL Advisory with a focus on ownership DNA. His mission is to help small and medium-sized businesses succeed by instilling an ownership DNA culture. He is also a founding member of the Executive Leaders for Advisory Boards. Tom and a group of over 40 select company founders, owners, corporate officers, entrepreneurs, and global leaders help companies at all stages of growth, companies that need a dedicated team of advisors to build, enhance, and reform their business. So thank you, Tom, for being on Jim, the show today. My pleasure. It's nice to have a conversation with you. We've been talking uh, off camera about ELAB, the Executive Leaders for Advisory Boards. And what I'm interested in, in developing further with you, is the con concept of the advisory board. What kind of companies need an advisory board and how ELAB can help companies. So if you wouldn't mind telling me a little bit more about ELAB. Executive Leader for Advisory Boards is the brainchild, as you know, of Candida CSAC, uh, who over her career uh, had, has had the opportunity and the, the blessing to create advisory boards as companies have come to her. And really what it is, it's assembling a group of, of eclectic, I will say, executives that could be in finance, operations, marketing, uh, sales, uh, business development, to address needs of companies to attack obstacles that they have and, and propel them, overcome those obstacles and drive through growth. It's all about growing right. companies. And uh, a lot of companies, you know, small, medium-sized businesses don't even know they need one right. or, or, or understand that they can tap into this large group of executives and founders. I mean, the group is really composed of founders, uh, CEOs, entrepreneurs, global executives who have taken companies through startup in many cases all the way through various five or six life cycle changes. They've, they've kind of experienced everything that, that's happened and no one has a monopoly on, on skill sets. The, I love entrepreneurs because they usually come up with the idea there's a reason why successful entrepreneurs make a killing. Right. Because they had the value of the idea. Right. But none of us I'm a more of a numbers driven kind of person. No, nobody has the, you know, either has, you know, feeling of HR, marketing, sales, finance, business development, all those various factors, technology, organizational development. It's just not the way God created the world. No, nobody has all of it in one package. Right. And I think one of the things, words you described for the group is eclectic. And it's interesting that you chose that word because I love that word. But it's interesting because we all come from diverse backgrounds and we all have different experiences. And sometimes when you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, you are trapped within your own world. You, have, you don't have that perspective from the outside. And when we were talking before the show about the recent economic situation, both in the downturns beginning in 2008 and, and recovery since then, People don't have that experience necessarily, or they don't hearing that from, from people on TV or on radio or, or what they're reading. They don't have that experience of going through that. And we've been through that. The people on eLab have been through that. The people have been through a lot of different experiences and they can share that point of view with people. Yeah, I've had, I have a philosophy that you need to be put through a crucible in life mm. to be really good, to really succeed. And I guarantee you every one of those 40, 40 to 50 executives or entrepreneurs or owners that we've seen, they've all been up against the wall. We did talk about it. Right. I was up against it in, as you were in 2008, 2009, where you wonder where the next dollar was going to come sure. or where you're going to go bankrupt uh, and became a pro at renegotiating everything. <laughs> and 
ownership and culture and thinking that way is so crucial, which is the beauty of, of eLab. Right. Every one of these people has owned a business or has been a senior executive at a C-level who's lived through the ups and downs. And I tend to look at things over long arcs. Uh, if you don't see the ups and the downs and understand scaling up and scaling down or not creating too much overhead when right. you, you can't create it, or you know, looking two, three years down the road, looking at other competitors, existing competitors, I have a, my mind always works three and five and 10 year right. views. You know, one of the potential competitors are ones that don't exist right now. So it's, 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 it's you need to go through getting squashed a few times, <laughs> if you will, uh, to do that. And, and a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs or, or small, medium sized companies as they've evolved, may not have lived through one of those cycles, or if they have, there's no way, and, and typically, the leaders of these organizations, everybody looks to them in the staffing and the organizations, they assume they're an expert. Right. We're not made that way. So to have an executive, or a, you know, owner, or an entrepreneur of a you know, 10 million, $100 million company, to be able to tap into a group, as I said before, collective people with business development, finance, operations, marketing and sales, organizational development, technology, strategy and planning, to be able to know I can tap into that group is powerful. Sure. And to deal with executives that have, there is no challenge somebody in that group hasn't seen or lived through. Um, so it was interesting the way the group was assembled. It was, perp and, I, and, I, and I said it was assembled with, with the concept of You've got functional areas, and over, over top of that, you've got business verticals, and the functional areas, and we've talked, talked about it before, business development, uh, finance, you know, business development term, you know, it could be sales, it could be acquisitions, divestitures, finance, it could be you know, accounting to uh, how do I evaluate a project or series of projects, how do you look at the, the capital cost structure, well, what does an investor want, how do you finance something, what's a bank look at, what's you know, what's private equity look at. Um, so you, you've got that kind of group. You've got, ex, we've got experts in insurance. Well, you've got property casualty, general liability, health, medical, dental. You know, how does an insurance company evaluate risk? Right. How do they lay it off? We've got experts that understand that. Right, and that can share that information with a business owner or a CEO that doesn't know about that, has no, has no experience with that has no um, wherewithal to have that information unless they go to someone within the yeah, e somebody who lives it or, or understands understands self-insurance right you know the next area I talk I would talk about is you know marketing and sales uh, which you're the expert on uh, one one particular on the discipline part. yes <laughs> but you know I, I can I like the fly fish sure and to me, fly fishing is okay. So I got all the gear, and it's I could go into an hour about talking about fly fishing. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, when I approach a stream, I'm looking at the market. There's a way to read a stream, and there's a way to present it, mm. and there's a way to catch fish. First of all, I got to make sure I'm fishing in the right marketplace. So there's that, that whole concept. Uh, I'm getting too off the off No, the no, I actually, that's, that's a fascinating way to look at it, but you're, you're right. It is like you're assessing, am I going to catch any fish in this stream? Well, and, and do I have the right bait? Bait, which is right. an artificial fly that imitates a life cycle of a fly. Most people may right. not understand that, but it, and it, depending on the time of day, the day of the week, the week of the month, it could be different. So it's understanding and learning that. Does a trout really want what the hell you're offering? And it sounds, it sounds. That's a great way. That is a great analogy you get yeah. to be used. Yeah. And then there's, you know, there's physical, physical natures of the, the stream. Right. Where, where in the market do you go to actually cast them? Then there's the whole presentation part, because if you present it wrong, if it's fake, they're just going to put their nose up and, and swim away. So I mean, it's there's, there's phenomenal parallels, and now that you know we could build a whole show around oh, we, that. We could. Concept. I could talk. We could talk about that for hours. And it's interesting, too, because you talk about the time of day, the, t the day you're doing it, uh, the light, the presentation, and also um, what type of fish are you going after? Mm -hmm. You know, is it a trout? Is it, is it something else? Or, you know, or Pike? Is it, is it, is it bass? It's, right. It's, 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 the analogy is to business. And you know, I talked about before we got on. Right. My, my two famous things I look at are history and fly fishing. 
and the ability to align things and understand the big picture is, is, is huge. I don't want to get too far off That's base. Okay. We were dealing with marketing uh, you know, as, as one of the functional areas. I did get off base. But, That's okay. But you're lucky, keeping going down the list of functional areas, we were talking about this grid. Yeah. And uh, so you've got operations. I mean, okay, I figured out a product I can sell. How do I produce it efficiently and effectively? How do I source it? Uh, we have one gentleman who's had to source stuff all over the world. I, I had Bruce on, my, on, yeah. on press conference a couple of weeks ago. Fascinating, yeah. fascinating. And, but then the ability to, what's the most efficient, effective way to produce it to a product line, to source in the product coming in, to keep in sync with sales, market. It's, it's a, that's a whole group of professionals that we have that can do that. The next area, organizational development. How do you compensate people, which is one of my best big boobs, when I, uh, things that is important to me when I deal with uh, ownership DNA. It's always, you know, how do you build a structure that keeps everybody motivated? Right. Throughout the, throughout the, and it's very important. I, you know, my career, I've, had, I've been blessed a couple of times to really understand how to own it and why, why it's so important. And it may sound cold, but it always is. You know, what's in it for me, either monetarily or, you know, educationally? I call it feeding the beast. I'm sure. growing. I'm getting relationships. I'm learning. That ownership stake in anything you do is so important. That ownership DNA that you've described in, in passing. I mean, I know that from my own career, when I felt that I was in ownership of something, even when I was working for somebody else, that really made me feel like, okay, this is my baby. I am responsible for this. I'm going to take care of this. I'm going to make sure it grows. I'm going to make sure I do everything I can to make this successful. And the moment I didn't feel that ownership stake anymore was the moment I, start, I started losing interest in it. Yeah, and, and there's, that's why organizational development is, is very important. You know, executive coaching, how do I structure the compensation, the various verticals, right. or, or hard, you know, the various functional areas, and aligning them with the vision, mission, of the company, it's it's so important you know, that gets that gets handled correctly. So that was another functional area. Then I would go strategy and planning, which is my favorite one, and I think Candida is is, is also in that area. But my mind tends to where I'm a numbers person, but I tend to work three, five, ten year thought process. What's the competition? Who's the competition? How much of that market can I capture? Right. And what about the new products or services I may not see? What's, what's down the line? What's, what's in the future? Yeah. I'd like to continue our, our conversation on that part, but we're going to take a quick commercial break for some messages from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Yeah, I like that. I can go on for hours and bullshit for hours. <laughs> Say we've got grit, and we'll take it as a compliment. Because it's our uncommon drive, our spark within, that brings us together and sets us apart. We are temple made. And when others take shortcuts, when others take breaks, when others take the easy way, we take charge. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more. I work 13 hours a day, six days a week. So when I'm off the clock, I gotta get stuff done. So when I need a snack, I need something healthy, tasty, and easy to eat. Like wonderful pistachios without the shells. They're protein powered, delicious, and great on the go. And that's perfect for me. Thanks, Liz. A woman without a lot of time. Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. 
RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in... Welcome back to Press Conference on RVN TV. I'm your host, Jim DiLorenzo, and my guest today is Tom Scuria uh, of IAWL Advisory, which I just realized after our discussion during the commercial, it stands for It's a Wonderful Life. It is. And also a, a member of the Executive Leaders for Advisory Boards, uh, ELAB, which we've been talking about primarily today. Uh, if you could, we were talking about some of the verticals and some of the. We were, we were kind of talking about a chart of how we ha how the organization yeah. how the, the people were selected. Yes. So I think we had covered before. I was talking functional areas across the top. Right. Uh, six or eight or nine, and I think we started business development, finance, insurance, legal, marketing, and uh, Sales. PR, marketing, PR, operations, organizational development, where we left off. Strat planning. I'm sorry. Strategic planning and planning, looking in one, three, five year and. and competitive marketplace. The last one, not the least, is technology, which we know has totally dominated everything. Right. And it is the ability to to track and capture information, KPIs, it's staggering and, and it's just changed our entire lives. I mean, if you look at the pace of change from the early 80s and, and what's happened in the last five, 10 years, it's staggering. So technology is, is the other functional area, if you will. So when the group was assembled, we looked at functional areas, but then we looked at business verticals. Okay. And the business verticals, really, it's, it's, there's roughly 22, and I apologize for, for reading, but if you it's look at right. SIC codes, I would call them, but you've got, <laughs> you've got experience in aerospace, defense, agriculture, and mining, business services, consumer products, consumer service, education, energy, finance, government, federal, government, state, and local, which is interesting, healthcare, life sciences, manufacturing, media entertainment, Nonprofit, real estate and construction, retail, software technology, IT services, telecommunications, transportation, storage, travel and hospitality and wholesale. So as this group was being assembled, and this is where the, the brilliance of what Candida was doing, she didn't want to have necessarily functional overlap, there could be some, or industry overlap, which is why the group is it's going to be capped at 50 right. with one simple vision, put people on advisory boards. So we don't want to have it at 100. You don't want mission creep. This is very clear and very straightforward. Um, so we've got this grid of functional areas, industry areas, and literally we've got somebody to tap Can into every, every one, one of those of things. Those so if you go on the website, you will and do the categories or you do the industries, you'll see them. And it, it was really brilliant. You know, within that, you have people that have lived through leverage buyouts, um, you know, startup companies. Uh, they know how to do land planning and development on real right. estate, zoning. Uh, you know, I've got, a, you know, I've got, there's, there's just so many different ability, t tax experts. You know, you got people who have done privately held manufacturing, it's, it's just, it's fascinating. And, and I think you've, you've, you've met the group. It is truly eclectic, truly deep. Every one of these people has 20, 30, 40 years of experience, yeah. have owned their companies or have been, 
or if they work with global companies, uh, their necks were on the line as, as the crucible. As it's, it's really a fascinating group of people, and it's probably the, the, the most valuable, uh, eclectic, uh, professional group of people I've met in the Philadelphia area. Now, how would a company that's interested in creating an advisory board, what's the best way for a company to work with eLab? There's a couple of ways. Okay. There is, uh, obviously, if, if you learn about us, find out who we are, there's a whole inbound process, there's a way to contact us uh, through the internet or through the LinkedIn group site. Uh, so that's one functional area. Or networking with the, as our executives grow out and network and start telling the story, contacting back through them and reaching out to them. Uh, we know we'll leave with the, the website name afterwards. The, another functional way they've done, which was brilliant, was something called Growth Company Catalyst. I wanted to ask you about that. And really what that is is um, a, a tool. If a company has a founder, owner, CEO, or small, medium-sized company has issues, strategic issues, and they're looking for a way to get free advice, effectively from a group, we will, on a confidential basis, have a meeting with them, free to them. They may have to pay for a breakfast or a lunch. Right. With a group of, could be 5, 10, 15, 20 of the, uh, of the group that will sit in and listen to their issues, their challenges, their problem, and have a conversation, come up with ideas, uh, kick stuff around the table. I fascin I've sat through three of these. It's really fascinating. And you may not get the same answer out of two people, uh, the advisors, which is really powerful. To me, it's really powerful. And you actually get them you know, challenging each other. Yeah. It's a rip because we've all had different life's experiences. We've walked through, it's really valuable. That, that I find fascinating. So you can present your, your group, your challenges, get feedback. If at the end of that meeting you want to continue dialogue with any of those individuals, individuals you're free to do it. Elab gets nothing from it. Um, so that's a way to start learning and finding out about, about the group. But really the concept of an, a, an advisory board, it's not a fiduciary. Right. It's not like a regular board position. It is you know, a small stipend, free advice to take, you know, to, to identify and how do they do it. Right. They look at your roadmap. Because they're coming from the outside, they're probably a lot more objective. They'll look to find obstacles and try to help you work through that and work you through challenges as, as they go forward. Um, and it could be you know, one person, it could be multiple people you put on your advisory board. So it's, it's really low cost, high powered executives who are really, you know, might ask why do they want to do it? Yeah. You're at a, everybody that's in this group is at a point in their life where they want to give back. Right. I jokingly say, you know, I don't want, I'm going to stop people from not making the 40 years of mistakes I made. <laughs> but that's, that's sincere in that yeah. these people want to give back. It's not about making money. It's, not, it's, 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 it's about sharing contacts, sharing experiences, feeding the beast. I, always, I think we talked about earlier. Right. I gotta keep, I've got this massive reading list I go through. I like putting new stuff in, in there. This group is all that way. Um, it fascinates, it pleases them. I know it sounds crazy, but if you've, if you've done this over your career and you've, you've gone through the crucible or you're, and you've got a particular area, and they all think very strategic, so they may have a very, powerful functional understanding, technology, finance, or whatever. But they've all evolved in their careers where that got, that got raised higher up in the organization, so they see how it intertwines with all those other functional sure. areas. So that's real powerful. And, and again, you know, business, by the way we all evolve uh, as humans, we don't have expertise in every one of those areas. Right. So why not tap into something free? Uh, and if you choose to want to do a relationship going forward, that's fine. Elab gets nothing from it. It's truly, we're not a, we're not for profit. That's not, we're not out searching to raise money. That's not what it is. Yeah. It's really for the advisory group and for the companies uh, to satisfy a need and a want to help people. And it is interesting because we've talked, we've been talking about networking groups in Philadelphia and professional services groups. People interact with each other, but it almost becomes like a resume sharing or, 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 or you know, I'm looking for a job kind of thing. Yeah. Some of these larger groups where you kind of get lost in the shuffle. And if you're a, a business owner or a, a, an executive with a business that's got some challenges, you might go to one of these things and say, I'm gonna meet somebody who I might be able to talk to. And it's kind of like an unqualified group that you're meeting. You're not sure of it. But with mm -hmm. eLab, you've got a qualified group of individuals 
yep. people who, who, uh, who are, have expertise in the area and are not looking to make money or make a right. consulting company. You, you may choose to develop a relationship with them down you, between you and, and them, but it's not about you know, selling services or, right. or trying to get proposals out the door. It's not that at all. Right. It's a very low pressure. It's no pressure at all. You choose to want to avail yourself of it. Uh, I don't know why, as a, as a business owner, you wouldn't take advantage of it with, right. with that op opportunity to see that group. And it's a powerful group. And the, the, the neat thing, you mentioned the three um, growth company catalyst uh, meetings that you, you've, you've been a part of so far. What has been the feeling back from the three different organizations that you that you met with? Have they have they responded back like, oh, you know, I've got some great ideas out of this? Or? I think each one of them uh, have gotten a lot of value out of it. They're they're getting depending on where they're where they where they are in their life cycle, and where their growth cycle. Uh, because one of them was a startup, one of them was pre-startup, and one of them was an established business. Okay, and. A lot of great recommendations, a lot of ongoing, continuing uh, dialogue, and, and some of them have developed relationships with these companies. Right. So they've availed themselves of this. Right. Um, and again, it's you look at various growth cycles. You know, it's really important. You could have people as a startup. You know, they could be in the expansion phase. They could be in professional where they're trying to put people and systems in. They could be consolidating. Now we've got to fix this great, fabulous growth right. cycle. Now we've got to fix some of it. And then they could be, at the next stage would be integration, where maybe I add product, service, where I vertically integrate or I horizontally integrate, and then you get to the mature stage. So we've got people that have lived through all those stages. Some of them have, in their own business, lived all the stages. Right. Where they've taken a company startup to public. Um, but again, it's, it's, we're looking for it to help small, medium-sized companies. Could be start up to $100 million in the greater Philadelphia area. Now the website is advisoryboards.org, advisory dash, slash, right. uh, uh, advisory-boards.org. It's executive leaders for advisory boards. And if you go to the website, you'll see uh, a number of different people. You have the advisors who are listed and, and their biographies are, are, are provided. But also there is a, uh, an application where you can start the conversation with growth company catalyst and find out ways to work with the group in eLab and uh, I think it's a very powerful tool again eLab launched officially earlier this year so we're, we're, we're still getting for it I'm a part of the group with Bruce with the uh, Tom excuse me and Bruce was my guest two weeks ago and uh, I really believe that this is one of the most unique things in the Philadelphia market right now in the mid-Atlantic market especially um, so I encourage you to take a look at it uh, thank you, Tom, for you. being on the show today and telling me a little bit more about it and telling our viewers a little bit more about it. If you have questions, please feel free to drop me an email, jim at jhdenterprises.com. If you have a question for Tom, I will, I will forward that on to him. I can also be reached by phone at 215-266-5943. I encourage you to reach out with any questions or concerns uh, with regards to your company and um, getting involved with eLab and forming an advisory board. Also, if you have questions about public relations or if you have a story that you would like to have told, I'd be happy to talk with you because most people know how to tell a story. They just don't know where and when to tell it, and I'd like to help you with that. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tom, and we'll see you next time here on Press Conference.